Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and here's my super awesome next-gen realistic experience of being able to click a light switch on and off and be able to affect a light player sound effect and do a few things like that. So before I get started, it'd be really awesome if everybody could give the video a like. I'm good, we're going to be creating a light switch with a raycast here, so you can left click or choose a particular button that you want to do. So you'll click it, you can create a sound, play the animation, and we'll get a light which appears over here. We can click it again, and we can turn it off. And you can do this on as many different light switches, turn different lights on and off, be able to do any sort of different interaction, because we're going to use Unity events, to be able to do it. I've already animated the button here, so we do a click and we've just got two animations which are for the light switch on and off version. I've got an FPS controller that just allows us to walk around. I've got a canvas which allows us to do a little crosshair in the middle of our screen with just an image in the middle and I've got a sound effect which I've added which is just a click which I've just dragged my sound effect from here into my hierarchy and I've made sure it's not it doesn't have a wake on play so we're going to have that. I've also got a light over here which we can just turn on and off whenever we desire to use it so I'll leave it off for now so we need to create ourselves a raycast so in my scripts folder I'm just going to create C sharp and I'm just going to call this light switch raycast and then I'm also going to have another C sharp script which is going to be our light switch controller which is going to control the actions that we do when we want to do it so we'll open up both of these in video studio so in the raycast script we can get rid of the two starting methods that we have and we can start by having a square bracket serialized field private integer and have this as ray length and set that equal to five as how far our ray is going to go going to have a private and we're going to call this light switch controller which is the name of our class or the script in the other script that we have and I'm just going to call that our interactive object because that's going to be the thing that we'll look for so just below here we're going to have square brackets a serialized field and then private image crosshair but we also need to add to the top that we're going to be using unity engine dot ui so we can access the image component and now we're going to start off by writing our update method so we can just say void update then two curly brackets below and we can say vector three forward fwd as our local variable equals the transform with a lowercase dot transform direction with two capitals and then in brackets vector three dot forward so this is going to be able to put the ray in a forward direction directly in front of where we want to be so now we need to actually make this happen so we'll say that if physics dot raycast in open brackets transform dot position so from our position comma forward in that direction that we wanted to go out raycast hit so whether the raycast actually hits something and then we need to have that as a, a local variable we'll add a comma and we'll just put in the ray length for how far this raycast needs to be drawn and then under here we're going to create another local variable to hold the actual thing that we will find so the light switch controller so i'm going to write var as a local variable type call this raycast object as a local variable that we're going to create set that equal to hit dot collider dot game object dot get component and then in angled brackets we're going to write the light switch controller and then add two brackets and a semicolon so in this case instead of having a var here you can see that we're just passing in directly the reference that we're looking for so we could realistically have the local variable set like that but we don't need to do that longhand because we're automatically just setting it when we need it then we're going to say that if our raycast object that we're just looking for there is not equal to null so if we've actually found something we'll add two curly brackets below we'll say that our interactive object which is our variable above is equal to our raycast object so the one we've just found with that script on and then we're going to have a method which is crosshair change and we'll set that to true because we're going to do that a little bit later now we're going to have an else statement below here and we're going to have one called clear interaction so it's another method that we want to make sure that if we're not actually looking at an object we want to get rid of it and make sure that we're not doing anything at all and then what we can do under this entire if statement for that raycast we need to write another else statement and we'll do the same thing we'll do clear interaction by calling the method because we also want to do is if we're not doing 
uh, the Raycast. We also want to make sure that it never gets confused and never is not finding anything if we don't have it. Then underneath there, we can say that if that our interactive object is not equal to null. So if interactive object, again, we found something, we can then do an input. So we can do a mouse click or something like that to actually click the button if we need to. So then we can say if input.get key down, number brackets, I'll do key code dot mouse zero as an example. So that'll be the left mouse click. Then we can say that our interactive object, and then that's going to be equal to, or we're going to call a method in our light switch script. So we'll move into the light switch controller and we'll just create a new method and call that void interact switch and then add create the method like so we can just copy that method name bring it down here and we're going to call that just there but you may need to make sure that that is a public do remember also that i will put links in the description to how to create a crosshair how to play audio how to create animations you can get hold of this entire project on my patreon and along with all the others on that, you won't get access to ArcViz Pro Volume 6 because that is not mine to give away. It's something I have to pay for, but I'll leave a link in the description for that too. Then underneath the encapsulation for the update, so before our last curly bracket, we need to say private void clear interaction because this is when we didn't want anything to happen. So when we don't have anything looking at, we need to get rid of everything that we're doing. So in clear interaction, if interactive object is not equal to null again, then we can say that crosshair change is false. And then we can say that our interactive object is equal to null because we want to make sure that we get rid of the interactive objects that's in there when we come to use it. So now just below there, the encapsulation for that method, we can say void crosshair change in brackets we can have a bool called on whether the crosshair is on or off we can have a curly bracket we'll say that if on is true then we'll have two curly brackets below and we'll say that crosshair dot color is equal to color dot red so we will have found something so we want to specify and we'll have another else statement below there and say that crosshair dot color is equal color dot white so as you can see We've written it and I need to just make sure that we change that to the correct spelling of crosshair change. So we're going to create a raycast, we'll look for the object and we'll look for the light switch controller. We'll make sure that we add that to our local variable, we'll change and fill this variable up here so we've automatically found it. If we haven't in any case, we want to clear the interaction or if we've looked away. If the, the interactive object that we've just filled in is filled in, we can do a mouse click. If at any time we call clear interaction, we need to make sure there is something in that slot and we have found an object previously, then we can clear it and turn our crosshair off. So now we can go into our script, which controls what our light switch should do. So at the top, we need another namespace. So we'll say using unity engine dot events. So we're going to use events in this. You can program this hard code it with variables and um, reference sound and things like that. But I'll show you the events. And this might be something that you can use for further things too. So above here, we need a few variables and we'll have serialized field private bool is light on because we need to check if it's on at any point because then we'll want to be able to turn it off. We'll have another serialized field private unity event and have that as our light on event with a semicolon. And then we'll have one below, which is serialized field private unity event again called light off event. So now we can go into our method and we'll say that if, and we'll put exclamation mark is light on. So in this case, we expect the light not to be on at the start. So if the light isn't on, we want to be able to switch it on when we do interact. So we expect light on to then equal true. So then we can, if we run this method again, we can do another thing. Then we want to actually say light on event dot invoke with a two brackets and a semicolon. So we'll be, do, be able to do our events. Now we also need to do an else statement. So if lights are on or equal to true at that point, we need to be able to turn them off. So then we can say that is light on is equal to false because we're going to be turning it off. And then we're going to do light off event dot invoke so that's all set up and ready to go we can go back into unity you can go on your fps controller make sure you add the light switch raycast to it raycast is five we're just going to add our crosshair object so we can change the color 
you could remove it if you didn't need it. Then I'm going to go into my light switch, which has my animation and you want to add your light switch controller script. So it'll have two empty slots for events. So we can add three events to the first, the lights on event. So the lights on event should have our sound effect. So we can drag our sound effect from the hierarchy into that slot. And then we can go to the audio source and we can choose play. So it's going to play it every time we click and that happens. Then what we wanted to do also is play our animation. So we can add our light switch here and then we can go onto the function, go onto the animator and we can choose to play a string. So in this case, we wanted to go to our animator, lights on, and I'm just going to copy that string because that's the name of our animation. So lights on under light switch underscore on. And then we wanted to make sure our light was on and off. So in this case, we can add my spotlight, which is my living room spotlight, go to the function, go to game object, and you can choose to the set the ball to true. So we're going to switch it on at that point. Then we can do the same thing again, add three events, add our click and do the same with the audio source and play, add the animation or add the object which has the animation, go to animator and choose to play the string. We can grab the original name and I'm ju I just rename that to light switch off. And then the last thing I'm going to add the light source again, function, game object, set active. And in this time, if we're turning it off, we're going to be set to false. Now, of course, you can add this to this same script, the light switch controller to as many objects as you want. And you could even add this to other things that may turn on and off. So it might be a kettle, let's say, and then you could turn the kettle on and off and do different events. So you might have a different sound effect, different animation, some particles that appear, and you can add more events if you need them, remove them as required and do things like that. So you get a lot more interaction and you only have a couple of scripts we can, which can do almost an unlimited amount of interactions there. So now when we press play, you can see that we can walk over to our light switch. You can see the red crosshair turned red. We can left click. We got a little sound, the animation played, and now we've got the light source here and we can do it again. Click, we get the animation and it's gone off and we can do that as much as we want and with as many objects as that we desire. I hope everybody likes this tutorial. Let me know what you think and if you found this helpful. Let me know if you've got any other good ideas of how to make this better, any optimizations, I'd love to hear them. So, so comment down below if you've got that. So be sure to check out my Patreon and you can get access to this project, all my other projects, scripts, models, and great content that you can't find anywhere else. Come and join me on Discord if you want to chat. And be sure to check out my great assets on the Unity store. So thank you so, so much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.